This is No You Are Earth and I have the privilege to be here with one of our elders, mm -hmm. Starhawk. Please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Starhawk. I am an author, an activist, a permaculture designer, teacher, ritual maker, and um, many other things. Yeah, um, we've been here together um, on a, a week-long course and we've been exploring how to become the people that we need to be to go forth to create the world that we know is possible. Starhawk has been sharing with us some of her tools, her skills. Please tell the viewers what it is that you have to share, what uplifts you, what gives you strength and courage to keep going. You've been an activist mm -hmm. for my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you have kept going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, early on in my life, uh, I was a young feminist back in the 70s, and many of us started exploring the question of religion and spirituality. And was there anything other than patriarchy? Yeah. And discovering the ancient goddess traditions that go back to the roots of European and Middle Eastern culture, um, the earth-based kinds of spirituality yeah. uh, that gave us healing traditions and magical traditions that later got called witchcraft and yeah. people were burned for them. Uh, and we started exploring that and creating our own rituals. And to me, that having that kind of a spiritual base uh, and having a community to practice with has been an important part of keeping up my spirits, my energy, my sense of yeah. hope and optimism, yeah. even through the times that we're living in now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the most powerful things mm -hmm. that I have experienced being with Starhawk has mm -hmm. been creating ritual. Would you be able to say something about how we can use ritual in these times of chaos to strengthen us and you know whatever it is that uh -huh. you feel why why is ritual important in these times to me ritual is something that doesn't necessarily have to be connected to a religion or a dogma or a belief system it's an act that we create to help us step into a a sacred space and time where we can connect more deeply with nature and with each other and with those great forces of creativity and compassion yeah. uh, that underlie the world. Yes. And ritual is also something we do to mark something out and say, this is important, pay attention, this has a meaning. Yeah. Um, you know, if we do a ritual for the moon, it says, hey, these, you know, it actually makes a difference whether the moon is waxing or waning and you should notice that, you should pay attention to yes. this. If we do a rites of passage for someone, um, again, it's like saying, hey, this person is of value. The changes that they're going through in their life uh, are important to mark yes. and to understand. And in my tradition of ritual comes out of those roots of Wicca and of, again, of ancient earth-based spirituality. Mm -hmm. But we acknowledge that those might be the roots, but there have been many breaks along the way. And ritual is something that we can create now for ourselves to meet the needs of our own time. So when we do ritual, uh, it's creative, it involves everyone who's there, it's participatory, it's not something you watch someone else do. Yeah. And we love to co-create rituals where everyone takes on a piece or a part yeah. and it gives everyone a chance to, um, to shine a little bit mm. and be seen and be acknowledged and yes. bring a gift to the group. Yeah, yeah. this is exactly what we did yesterday. There was a group of like yeah. 27 of us, was mm -hmm. it 27? And we each divided up into different groups to prepare different parts of the ritual. And it was a ritual to empower us to be the people to move forwards to create this possible world. And it, for me, it was really um, a kind of a great 
transformative feeling. You know, I mean, I enter as one person uh -huh. and come out as somebody different. And it feels so great to be, um, you know, I was brought up Catholic. Uh -huh. So I spent my, like, quite Catholic. <laughs> I spend a lot of my time in ritual of going to a church and seeing somebody mm. else perform the ritual. But to, yeah, as you said, each one of us participating in that way, it brings a magic, doesn't it, mm -hmm. that is unique to that moment because of those individuals. <coughs> yes, there's something really beautiful about a ritual that people co-create together. And the key to having it flow and hold together is having a clear intention at the beginning. Yes. Like, um, you know, we always take time to think about what we need, meditate on what the needs are, and then craft an intention. So last night, the intention was to ignite the fire of hope yep. and empower us to take the actions that will bring that hope into being. Yeah. And, I mean, <clears throat> we're surrounded all the time of the news of all that's going wrong in the mm -hmm. world. And this can be an incredibly heavy burden to bear, can't it? Yeah, it really can. Yeah. yeah. It, it stops us from being able to be the channels mm -hmm. of that creative energy of Earth. Um, how could people who are looking at this video, how could they use ritual in a way to empower themselves in these chaotic times? What would you suggest? Well, I would suggest thinking about what is most important to you, like what you care most deeply about. Yeah. Um, what, you, what do you care about more than you care about your own comfort or convenience or profit? Yeah. You know, what is sacred to you in that yeah. sense? And then you can always create a ritual to honor that in some way, to give thanks. Um, John Young, who's teaching with us, you know, has so many beautiful practices about just going out into nature each day. If you do that, that's my personal practice. Yes. Is to spend some time in the natural world, watching, listening, observing, and paying attention. Yes. to what's happening around us. Yeah. And that itself can be a ritual. It's a way of saying nature is important. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and thinking about some of the things we do each day, you know, you can brush your teeth every night, and I hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but you can also make that a ritual. If there's something you're working on, releasing if you you know you could say every night um i am cleansing myself of all the things i said i shouldn't have said today <laughs> i love yeah. that and um bringing in wise words and good yes. messages yes so i mean i i really love that because that's quite different to sort of making this special yeah. ritual in a special place and a special time, but it, mm -hmm. it's just like an everyday action. Yeah, but you give it an intensified meaning. Yes. And, of course, it's lovely to do the special thing in a special time and special way. Yes. And into that, but you can also come back to those very simple, ordinary things. Yes. And, and make them special. Yes. And... In that specialness, something like brushing your teeth not only is special, but it's magical, isn't it? Yeah. And you'll find if you do that, then then things change. You know? And maybe you aren't actually saying those hurtful things so often. Yeah. yeah. So you just mentioned tooth brushing, but mm -hmm. I mean, how many other habitual things do we have in our daily lives? Yeah, I mean, I grew up Jewish, and in the Jewish tradition, there's a prayer for almost anything, you know, and that's just a simple mm. way, and they're short. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Can but, you give an example? Um, and there's a prayer for washing your hands. Okay. You know, Baruch Atah Elohim Melech 
אשר תשאר במצוותיו וציוון על נטילת ידיים.
the unstoppable, irrepressible power of nature. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Thank you, Starhawk. I would like to honour you as one of our elders. Thank you. All this time that you have worked and your persistence, your focus, your commitment, your inspiration to so many other people. Thank you. Thank you.